Hi guys, Mix here. Welcome back to another installment of Corpse Body Drive. Blood Drive? Blood Drive? Blood Drive? Blood Drive? Blood Drive? Guys. Chapter 8, let's go. Ties severed, ties mended. Okay. I guess we need to get up that clock tower and stop Misuto. Oh shit, what the fuck has happened here? What is this? The floors and walls are completely covered in... I don't even want to know. The school's still here at least, so time really does seem to have reverted. But this is definitely very different. What was that? One theory I was reading about. If time is ever turned back, you leap over the rails into the whirlpool of destiny or something, things will never be exactly the same. Another tremor. I need to hurry, that light I saw means the seventh pillar is being born. If we don't intervene, Masuta will use his false book of shadows to destroy everything all over again. Okay, well, don't go away from the save point, you fucking idiot. Right. Oh, fuck, so I didn't even see that. Right. Save the game. I guess we have a time limit here where we need to get to, uh... Stop Misuto. Right? I don't fucking know. I need to stop running into things, but... Oh, for fuck's sake, you fucking kidding me? Okay, good. I am so fucked. I didn't know what I was doing, and I was. You need to stop being so fucking tired. Holy fucking shit. Ah. <sighs> These spikes seem a lot more potent than they previously were. I don't know if that's just me or not. I don't know the way to the fucking tower. Am I- You fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Fucking! I need to go back and save. It's because to heal. Because I'm that just fucked me so bad. I wasted a fucking talisman as well, which is great. Fucking Masuto's little smug cunt face there. At least I've got a save here. So Matt, how many? I'll eventually get it down, even if it takes me a few tries. We go up a floor, right? Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, and then we go down and round, I want to say. I don't fucking remember. Right, there's the cupboard. Oh, hang on, this is... This is I was wrong, but this has changed. This actually might be the right way. Fuck. There should be a save point. Yes! Oh, okay, we're nearly at the tower, right? We're nearly there. Is this... Okay. This isn't that difficult. I'm going to keep the original save, though. And then we just go upstairs here, and we're at the spiral staircase, right? Like, that's literally it. And yeah. Yeah, we're here. We just keep going up, and we can fucking... Masuto, I am fucking gonna wreck you. I don't know if I should have been exploring and looking for items at this point, but I don't care that much right now. That poor guy is still fucking there. At least he doesn't seem to be, like, around and doing horrible shit to us or anything like that at the moment, which is great. It's right, just drop a lung, Ayumi, it's fine. It's not like we're in a hurry or anything to get to the top of the fucking tower to save the world! Well, yeah, I think I, 
I think I'll have a little bit of a lie down if that's alright. Yeah, that's fine. Just don't worry about it. I mean, it's, it's just everyone's going to die again. And it'll be all your fault yet again because you're like, oh, I'm tired. I can tell you now. I'm f I've said this before. I'm fucking... I'm overweight, guys. And I would still be running up here like shit. I wouldn't be stopping to go, huh, if the fucking world was on the line, you know? And she's not... She's, she's perfectly capable of doing it, you know? Okay, here we go. How marvellous is the seventh pillar, the Sephirot of Knowledge. I made this happen with the power of my Book of Shadows. What in the world? It all begins now. Time to break this wall down and heavenly host with it. And I'll raise you as well, Kwan Niwa. One stone to kill oh so many birds. Very nice. Good boy. To bits with you, heavenly host elementary. No! The fuck was that? Stop. You have to stop this. I please don't kill her. Sis has nothing to do with this. I how pathetic. Oh, here comes a fucking head Jesus, did I fail? Oh no, I didn't. Are you me to the rescue? Magical girl Sachiko power. When Iko opened her eyes, she found me standing in front of her. I had one of my arms outstretched, obviously having blocked something with it. My arm had protected Aiko from the charging mouse, almost as a shield would. Are you okay, Aiko? Yes. Ayumi, what power is this? When did you... Shinazaki? Class rep? Shinazaki, you... Of course, Kishinuma, Mashida, Nakashima and Miss Kwan were all there too. Thank God, everyone's still alive. Filthy brat in the red dress isn't with you? Something's wrong. What's going on? I see your aura's colours a little bit off. It's got the hue of someone who's repeating a moment in time. Heh, you can tell that, can you? Did you just laugh at me, you bitch? You think you can fuck with me? I'll mess you up, you little piece of shit. Ha! Go on, Ayumi, you little... Just stop. Your plan ends here. I couldn't be so cocky if I were you, Ayumi Shinazaki. Just who do you think I am? I'm the one destined to rule here. The surviving member of the Yagura. The last Misuto. Is that so? You're so dead. I'm going to fucking kill you, Ayumi. With the wisdom of the witches. You just don't get it, do you? Stand down, imposter. What? What do you have there? You told me it was gone. Were you just playing a sick joke on me? As if he was in any position to be accusing me of deception. I'll be taking back the contents of that book now. Oh, the book is pissed! This is awesome, actually. My book of shadows roared and bit down hard into the false book of shadows. Misuto was in total panic, but it didn't stop, it wouldn't. The book of shadows, my book of shadows, completely devoured the imposter. Damn you. Eat him too. Oh, kick his ass! <laughs> the Book of Shadow's tongue stretched out like a whip, cracking itself at Misuto. You need to stop. It'll eat you too, you know. Just kill him, for fuck's sake! Don't just like, be like, yeah, don't do that again. Don't be a bad boy. Fucking kill him! Hey, Satoshi. I'm gonna pin him down. Help me out. You bet. Hold still now, okay? It's over. You're too much of a danger to everyone, so we're going to tie you up. Oh, this is a really fucking- just fucking kill- just fucking- This man, this man, this kid, whatever he is, just tried to destroy the fucking universe, and our plan is to tie him up. With a handkerchief, Machida tied Masuto's wrist together. Another earthquake? Look! So the world ended anyway. Why? We stopped the Sephiroth from activating. It's not over yet. Did you really think you could hold down the Nirvana all by yourself? The Nirvana that's been gathered and eaten by that book does not represent the whole of the Book of Shadows. 
I told you before, didn't I? The Diviner has a core separate from that which gives shape to Heavenly Host, and that core possesses a consciousness all of its own. The core has its own consciousness. Is that what Sachiko meant by the person in the Nirvana's core? The core's thoughts will activate the Sephiroth of knowledge, fusing the real world and Nirvana as one, and bringing it to its knees with or without my intervention. My goal in all of this was to gain control over the decidedly berserk core of this dimension. But you stop that from happening, leaving no other outcome for your world than gradual, disorderly, and chaotic destruction. So what are you going to do about it? I'll do what you couldn't. I'll finish it. I'll complete this book. Is that so? Well, let's see what you can manage then. Let's see if this little coward who always relied on her big sister and her friends has finally grown a spine. The Book of Shadows core sleeps somewhere in this Nirvana. Just try to confront the will of the witch who created this book. See what happens. A normal human would go mad a hundred times over. The prospect of us going mad seemed to amuse him. He smirked. Machida, Nakashima, Kishinuma, Miss Kwan, and Aiko. Thank you for coming here. I'm truly happy to have friends like you. But you all need to return to the real world now. Do you have a way back? We all set. The spirit charge in my Ever After Stones is almost at capacity. So we can finally go home. That's great to hear. What about you, Shinazaki? I have something I need to take care of. What is it? Whatever it is, you can count on us to help out, Shinazaki. We came here to bring you back after all. Isn't that right, everyone? You bet. That's right, class rep. No, I'll be fine. I'll head back on my own soon. No way, no how. Let us help you, Shinazaki. It'll go faster if we all do it. Then it's just you. Oh, fuck me. Nakashima! What's wrong? What happened, Naomi? Huh? Can no one else see her? What's wrong, Naomi? Don't follow her, you fucking idiot. Suddenly a vision flared in Naomi's head as she was seeing someone else's eyes for a moment. Is Psycho alive? Who the fuck is this? This is so interesting. Uh... Gwah. It's a great noise, I like it. I like it! Well, this is Jean. Big Brother! Big Brother! I'm scared! Somebody help me! So Yuka's in the call. Fucking wonderful. Hashtag fucking wonderful. Naomi. Hey, snap out of it, Naomi. Satoshi? Naomi, thank goodness. This is bad. What do you mean? What happened? Just now, I... Naomi? I saw a girl in black just now. She jumped down from here. A girl in black? Were her eyes black too, by any chance? Yeah, they were. I didn't see anything. Did you, Satoshi? Nothing here, either. It was Sachi. Sachi? Sachiko's twin sister, the spirit of an unborn baby who died in utero. I bought these here from Michinu I bought these here from Makina Shinazaki's home without thinking, and in doing so I bought Sachi's spirit over here from the real world as well. Shiny fucking teeth. Teeth? They look like baby teeth. Yeah. She's a strong evil spirit who's been eating away at the world around her indiscriminately for some time. My company has been after her for quite a while now, and it seems her powers have increased quite significantly since coming to this dimension. Those might just serve you well as protective charm. I think you should hold on to them, Machida. But Shinazaki, if you have them, you won't. I have the book. Miss Kwan, I just saw what that girl in black saw from this eye. Naomi removed the patch from her left eye. Her injury hadn't healed in the slightest. Her left eye was clouded over with blisters blanketing the pupil that spelled out the name. Sachi. 
That looks bad. Naomi, you... Nakashima's eyes are a result of a spirit well, literally burning itself into her. She's been using eye drops made from holy water, however, so she should fully recover in time. The image you saw, however, may in fact be a reflection of what the spirit itself is seeing. If that's the case, then Satoshi, this Sachi girl went into the underground bomb shelter, and I definitely heard Yuka's voice in there. What? That's impossible. She should be at home right now. No, she's most certainly here. You. Satoshi Mashida. Your little sister is such a very doting girl. When I told her that her brother was in danger, she wasted no time at all following me to this dimension. Is Yuka seriously here? People like you who've been to Heavenly Host have a special aura about you. One that signifies you've been through the loop of death, as it were. And she, among all of you, came into a different direct contact with Sachiko and established a bond of sympathy with her, giving her quite a well of spiritual energy to draw from. Really, I can think of no one more well-suited to this world than she. You rat bastard. I summoned her here to be used as the water conveyance through which the Nirvana's core would be delivered to my new Book of Shadows. That's uncon unconscionable. Even at this very moment, I'm squeezing every last drop of spirit energy from her in the school's basement. But well, now that my book's gone, she's of no further use to me at all. So you best hurry if you plan to get her back. Sachi's on her way there right now, after all. <sighs> Satoshi! Wait, Miss Kwan. I'm going too. But with the eye the way it is... No, I'm going. I want to help save Yuka as quickly as possible. I understand. Let's go then! Oh, I'll... Right, you stay with Kishinura and Shinazaki, okay? Once you successfully reach Yuka, we'll come back for you. Okay, sis. Aiko was looking down and turning slightly red as she said that, and Miss Kwan did not fail to notice. Her face lit up brighter than I'd ever seen it. Alright, Kishinuma, please look after my sister, if you would. Sure thing. She actually called me sis. I can't remember the last time that happened. <laughs> Gah. Does your eye hurt? You look like you're suffering quite a bit. Hold on for a moment. Here, I bought some eye drops. Hopefully they'll keep the pain under control. Thanks. Shinazaki. Could you join the search party too, Kishinuma? You never know we'll be down there. The more guys, the better, I think. But what about you? I'll be fine. I have the book. This jerk can't intimidate me anymore. <laughs> well, you certainly seem confident. I'll be back in a jiff. Let's kill him. Guys, we should kill him. How about we kill him? Let's kill him. Ayumi? Hey, Ayumi. Untie me. Just sit still. When everything's all over, I'll take you back. Are you serious, Ayumi? Yeah, I think even somebody like this must have people who'd miss him if he were gone. Like hell I do. The fuck's wrong with you, bitch? I don't need your pity or your charity. You think you're so much better than me, huh? Misuda suddenly began to act hysterical, as if the words had struck a nerve somewhere deep in the core of his soul. Aiko was not amused. She stared him down, and easily won. He quickly regained his composure, however, and took a more casual, more relaxed posture. His tone almost made it sound like he was getting ready to strike a deal with us. Tell me, Amy, do you know what the driving force of the world is? It's malice. Malice is the heart of one person as he knowingly deceives another, or the genuine wish for misfortune to befall one's fellow man. It's really no different than a curse. But unlike curses, it's not the hatred of the victim that spawns it, but that of the assailant. I could hardly wait to see where this was going. I was ready for him to throw me a curveball and try and trick me into helping him. After all I could think was good luck with that. And all I could think was good luck with that. See, the spiritual organization my grandpa built, Yagora, fell to ruin. My asshole ancestors, who had no abilities to speak of, I should note, were persecuted as heretics. But leaving the Book of Shadows to fall into the hands of a dangerous organization of black magic practitioners like Martuba's tomb just had bad news written all over it. That's what Gramps thought anyway, so he stole the forbidden tomb, smuggled it away from the grubby hands, and secretly entrusted it to the Shinazaki family. Everything he did, he did to save the world. He was practically burning with righteous fury. But naturally, his peers thought he was nuts. They called him, at best, a fake, a swindler, or a downright monster. They even burned his house down. Don't know exactly how he died, but I know he really went nuts by them. Lost his marbles and died while running around town like a chicken with his head cut off, I hear. His son? Then my father committed suicide. As did my mother. Wrapped things up for the townsfolk all nice and clean-like. 
And no matter where I moved since then, they'd always be pieces of shit tracking me down, breaking my windows, cursing my family's name. It was starting to get real old. I shrunk back a bit, definitely wasn't expecting this from Masuto, nor was I quite certain how to react to it. After my parents died, reporters started swarming my house day after day. They were eating this shit up. They tried to catch me off guard and turn anything I said about news stories with headlines like creepy local couple commits suicide, infiltrating the hair-raising occult home. They asked me if my parents ever told me their regrets, or if I had any juicy stories of horrible family misfortunes. At one point, one of them even held up a sheet of loose-leaf paper that said something like, it doesn't matter if it's true or not, as long as it's entertaining. But the thing is, despite what the press seemed to think of them, my parents never once cursed the world. His eyes were swimming. I didn't get the sense that he was lying about any of this. Every day at three, they give me a piece of gum to chew on as a treat, even though they had no money whatsoever. It made me so happy and always got me to stop crying. So that's why he uses like the 10 yen shit. It felt for him. I genuinely felt for him. One day before I consciously realized what I was doing, I doused one of those paparazzi holes coats in lighter fluid and set the fucker on fire. Wound up getting me thrown in juvie. Now just try and tell me your ancestors weren't exactly the same as mine, Nagumi. And it's not just us. Jealousy, pride, bullying. It's all the same damn thing when you get down to it. Practitioners like us aren't the ones responsible for the curse. We're not the ones spreading misfortune. It's the piece of shit peasants who scared of us at the root of it all. But hey, that's just what it means to be different from ordinary humans. Right, Ayumi? That's what the real world's like. If you're different, you're a pariah. You're evil. I don't like that way. I don't like the way Dad and Mum talked about what you decided to do with your life, sis. It was all decency, this, and keeping up appearances, that. But they were talking about you, and you always put everything you've got into everything you do. It was really insulting. Hinoe flashed me a kind smile and patted me on the head. Ayumi, you shouldn't speak ill of Mum and Dad. We broke off from the main line and began living peacefully in order to spare our families from what would surely be a sad fate. And it makes perfect sense for them to oppose actions that they might feel lead us down that road again. Their warning surely comes from a place of kindness. You see, this curse called malice is spreading across the world, town by town. Your ancestors went through so many struggles and look at how they were treated. What value is there in a world where superior specimens of humanity are attacked by the masses? Is that why you take people's lives? Overpopulation has polluted the earth with pigs, and I feel it's my duty to thin their numbers and quash their holier-than-thou ideals. By tying them down with fear, I can control them. Misuto slammed his foot on the ground. For what it's worth, my sister would never agree with you. I still felt for him. I pitied him. My eyes were starting to mist over as well. I wanted more than anything to reach him, to save him. Hinoe was too kind for her own good. Like, stupidly kind. We thought about that a lot. So what you said about her being your mentor? That part's true. She was the first person I ever opened up to aside from my parents. Despite how short a time we had together, I thought of her as a real partner in crime. She was my companion. And as someone who had no relatives, that was the only time I ever felt loved. I loved another human being. I never met a single other person who had such an excess of kindness and forgiveness in her heart, and I doubt I will again. My eyes widened, and Misuto's eyes became more distant. When he spoke about Hanoi, it's like he was sliding into the past. His whole facial expression reflected such incredible loneliness. So you and Sis were... Still. Sacrificing yourself to save someone else's bullshit. It's hypocrisy, pure and simple. Hurting yourself for any reason just winds up hurting everyone around you. Would you die in a place of someone who's trying to commit suicide? Your family would be sick with grief, and that doesn't seem right, does it? I couldn't answer. I'd been repenting the actions that led to my sister's death this whole time, and really couldn't argue with what Masuto was telling me. Compassion for others is strictly the domain of superior humans. But because they forgive everyone without exception, and they don't understand what it means to question or doubt, they get assaulted, for no other reason than because people are naturally malicious. This was the first time I'd ever heard my sister being naive, I guess, and I definitely had trouble believing it. All I could remember were the smiles, and those were genuine as could be. But behind them, there may have been hidden wounds caused by people relentlessly taking advantage of her gentle nature. And that sweet, kindly Hanoi is no longer in this world. Rumour has it she died to save a greedy arsehole, who was meddling in matters she couldn't possibly understand. 
How much does that poor girl have to sacrifice? How much pain must a superior human being like her be subjected to? I'm not finished yet. This world needs to be corrected, and it's up to me to show these peasants, those pigs, just what their sins have begun. So what do you say, Ayumi? I'm tiny. You're Hanoi's sister. You wield the full power of the Shinazaki family lineage. You have the makings of a chosen one. Why don't we work together and tie this world, unite this world as one? Because that's not what Sis would have wanted. And the handkerchief didn't work. Ayumi! Wrong answer, Ayumi. Misuro stared down at me with an ice cold look in his eyes, tossing away the handkerchief that was supposed to have been tied securely around his wrist. It's a fucking handkerchief, you idiots! What do you fucking expect? Both hands. Does that mean he could have broken free any time he wanted? Um, you're a fool as well. Being devoured alive by the Nirvana is supposedly quite an agonizing way to go, I hear. I was showing you mercy earlier when I tried to kill you with my knife. Oh, for fuck's sake. Wait! I'll let you in on a little secret, Yumi. You've already done purging the world yourself, and you don't even know it. Those countless black shadow figures you've been exercising here in Heavenly Host? There's the spirits of human beings. Live human beings from the real world. Or formerly live. Because the real world and Nirvana have been fusing together, human souls have been stumbling halfway in through the cracks and appearing here as black shadows. Which would make you, I believe, a murderer. Each time you kill one of these figures, the other half of that soul dies with it. The person's body snapped in half in the real world, dying instantly and mysteriously. I was still laid out flat on the ground, reeling from the punch and from the shock of this new revelation alike. I clenched my teeth and tried to pull myself up desperately, wait wanting to recapture this fugitive, but I was too unstable to keep my balance, plummeting back to the floor right away. This is too painful to watch. Why would you even come here when you're so hopelessly unprepared? I'm off. Until the world ends, you might as well just keep on sitting right there and thinking about what you did. Wait, Misuto. Don't shout my fucking name, bitch! See you around, Yumi. You're a dumbass through and through. But I gotta say, you definitely take after your sister with that straight-laced attitude of yours. We're fucking idiots. We are the biggest fucking idiots ever. 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 It's the real thing. I finally have the real thing. If I just return the Nirvana's core to oh. <laughs> If I can just return the Nirvana's core to this, the book will be complete and I'll be unto a god. Huh? You. What do you want and how are you still alive? It was Satsuki. She was standing directly in Misuto's path. Misuto's path. Her entire face was stained in red, with only her white eyes breaking through. She wavered in place as she stared directly, wordlessly, into Misuto's soul. A moment later, Misuto noticed something behind her. One of the red helms that had been wandering the skull. You two. What happened to guarding Yuka? Why are you even here, you worthless tin can? Suddenly, Satsuki's head split down the middle into eight equal-sized portions, like a flower budding. Kia! Holy shit! The petals then closed around Misuto's head, tearing it clean from his body. Blood spurted from his neck and his appendages twitched. Well, 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 this is a, a twist and a half. No matter how obnoxious they were in life. Everyone's always so calm and peaceful when they're dead. If only you'd never gotten your hands on this book. It's really a pathetic end, Masuto. I wish I could have killed you myself as promised. But you see, there were always a lot of red marks here, weren't there? That's because we Martubas had already come to investigate. This girl you brought with you is a member of Martuba's tomb herself, in fact. This sucks. The Order is going to get so cocky once they hear the Yaguras are gone. I'm not looking forward to that. Megari suddenly grabbed Satsuki's hair and pulled her in. Honestly. I told you to stay with Yuka Mashida, didn't I, you monster? 
Yes, Mistress Magari. Holy fucking shit. Twist and a half. Awesome, though. That was really cool. So, yeah, Miss Suto is now dead and out the picture. So, I guess she's now the real baddie. <laughs> Big Brother Setsuki! Almighty God! Almighty God, cleanse this child's sins. The Lord hath spoken, though some must reside in trees that have died. Yuka was in seemingly empty room, though she could hear prayers echoing around her. They sounded like the prayers one might expect from a demonic exorcism. I'm scared. Where am I? Big Brother, I don't believe it. Big Brother wouldn't lie to me. He can't be dead. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, take mercy on this impure soul. Strike down this person with one firm swing of thy divine blade, O oh Lord. And that's the end of that chapter. Ties severed. Ties mended. Our main baddie is dead and been replaced by a character that sometimes... I don't understand what the fuck is going on. But um, anyway, the chick has the Book of Shadows and uh, that's probably bad. We have two chapters left, I think, in the whole game. So um, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens in those installments really soon. Hope you enjoyed this installment of Corpse Party Blood Drive, guys. If you did, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought of the series so far. And there's more to come. Bye for now. Have a great fucking day. Bye for now.